average family, even as yours and mine, spent a quiet night at their rented country house. A night of terror. As I said, the Cannings were just an average family. Harry was 29 and worked as a sound engineer for a broadcasting studio in the city. Ethel was 27 and had been a school teacher before she was married. Now she was kept pretty busy between writing the great American novel and taking care of Judy, her seven-year-old daughter. This was the first year they had rented a house in the country for the summer, and Ethel didn't take much to the idea of being alone even. But first, I didn't know what it was that woke me. Perhaps it was because I was expecting Harry. He phoned that he was working overtime. He wouldn't be home till after midnight. I didn't like the idea of his driving 60 miles from this city at that hour. Or maybe it was just because I wasn't used to being alone with Judy in the old house. I got out of bed. I opened the connecting door to Judy's room. She was sleeping. Quietly. I closed the door softly, went across to my window. Something had awakened me. What? Was it a sound I heard in my sleep? Or... Or was it a premonition? I looked out the window. The night was dark with a thousand secrets. Harry should have been home by this time. My watch showed a few minutes after twelve. Maybe he'd had an accident. Maybe that's why I awakened. Some sort of telepathy. And then I saw the headlights. It was Harry. He was turning in our road. The headlights bathed me for a moment as he swung into our driveway. Everything was all right then. I'll be right down, Harry. Breathlessly, I raced downstairs to let him in. I was so happy I could cry. It was only then I realized what tension I'd been under, all because of my silly fears. I unlocked the door quickly. Oh, Harry, I was so worried. Sorry to bother you so late, miss. Had an accident with my car. Oh, I... I thought you were my husband. Oh, sorry to disappoint you. Oh, no, no, I'm afraid you can't come in. My husband isn't home yet. Well, it won't be for long. Oh, oh my heavens, you're hurt. It's your arm. Oh, it hurt in the accident. I'm afraid it's broken. Oh, you poor man. Here, sit down. Yeah. Sit down right here. Oh, that's better. Yes. Your arm's so limp. Do you really think it's broken? I can't tell. It's kind of numb. Oh, dear. I feel so helpless. I don't know what to do. I I took a first aid course during the war, but I don't remember a thing. Now, maybe I better call Dr. Schultz. Oh, please, don't go to the trouble. There's no trouble. The phone's right here. I said no doctor. But it's all Put right. Put down I... that phone, please. I don't understand. Maybe you understand this. A gun. Put the phone down. Who are you? I'll ask the questions from now on. Your name's Canning, isn't it? How did you know? Name's on the door, isn't it? Oh. What kind of phone is that? What do you mean? Party line? No, it's a private wire. Uh, can you dial or do you have to ask the operator for the number? No, you just dial. Good. Push the phone over here to this side of the table. Who were you going to call? The phone, please. You better get out of here before my husband comes home. <laughs> oh, how do you think he'd make out in an argument with this? Oh. The phone. Thank you. Now step back a little. That's good. I have to put this gun down while I make my call. It's arm of mine. But you understand that I can pick it up faster than you could reach it from there, don't you? Yes, I understand. I see we'll get along all right. Oh, operator, get me Plaza 9, 9970. Yeah, I'm hurry, please. Oh, this is uh, 864. Please. After your phone call, you get out. Before my husband comes home. He's late already. You wouldn't turn an injured man out of your house in the middle of the night. Oh, hello, Linda. <laughs> That's right. I had a little trouble. I hurt my arm. Look, I think you'd better come up here. Yeah, and bring Fred and Doc Stetson along. 
No, no, no. Everything's fine. Don't be any trouble. I'm a guest of some very good friends up here. Canning to me. Or you drive up Highway 26 through a cord and turn right when you pass the first gas station. Uh-huh. Just a mile from there. You ought to be here by 6 in the morning. There'll be a light in the downstairs window. Right, Linda. See you in the morning. You can't stay here all night. You've got Shut to Shut up. Go. Um. What's that over there? Radio? Yes. Pretty big. It's a sending and receiving set. Harry built it himself. He's a radio engineer. Hmm. Can you get short wave police calls? Yes. Turn it on. But I don't. Turn it on. No. Well, getting brave, huh? I don't think you'd dare to shoot me. It would be murder. They'd send you to the chair. Now you get out of here. You call your friends and tell them to beat you someplace else. Now there, I've opened the door. Now get out. Worried about your husband, aren't you? Afraid of what'll happen to him if he comes home now, huh? I want you to go away. And if you don't go now, I'll run out and scream for help. There are other houses in this neighborhood and somebody will hear me. Oh, go ahead and run. What? I won't shoot you. You won't? I don't have to. What do you mean? You wouldn't dare to run out and uh, leave your kid upstairs. That little red-headed kid with a cute curl, Judy. How do you know I have a daughter? Easy. A doll carriage over there. How do you know she has red curls? Maybe I guessed it. And her name, too? Turn on that radio. All right. Highway 26. All cars must be searched. Every passenger positively identified. Officers are warned to exercise extreme caution. Though believed to be wounded, he's armed and dangerous. I will repeat, Arnie Bishop, known as the gentleman killer, escaped from custody on board the Allegheny Limited at 11 o'clock while being escorted to the death house at the state prison. He's thought to be heading north in the direction of the Now you know who I am. Arnie Bishop. You're Arnie Bishop. How many rooms in this house? Six. Fine, fine. My friends and I will stay here for a few days. We'll make a fine hideout. What will you do when my husband comes home? Don't worry about him. Now, suppose we go in the kitchen, then you can make me something to eat. Wait. Huh? Why did you choose this house to come to? This house of all of it. Can't you guess? Yes, I think so. How did you know Judy's name? And about the color of her hair? Ah, you're getting warm. My husband, Harry, Harry told you. Ah, oh, you know you're pretty smart. Oh, please, don't you have any pity at all? Tell me what you did to Harry. He's not hurt much. I just tapped him on the head. He picked me up on the road, gave me a lift. I pumped him, found out all about this house, and about you and Judy. Then I knocked him out and kept going. It was pretty tough driving with one hand, but I made it. Where's Harry now? In the back of the car. He can't get loose. I'm going out to... Stay where you are. But Harry, sir, I can't leave him out there alone. About this little red-headed kid of yours, sir. Where did you sleep? Upstairs? You wouldn't... You wouldn't hurt her. Better stay here if you want to make sure. Oh, no. Now, suppose we have something to eat. Now let's return to the little white shingled house on the hill where Ethel Canning is entertaining her uninvited guest, Arnie Bishop. You know, he's a pretty courageous guy for an ex-convict. But then maybe he has the courage of his convictions. <laughs> but Arnie isn't so smart, you know, tangling with a red-headed gal. 
He ought to recall that old ditty. How's it go? Beware of a girl with deep red hair. A man is safer in the electric chair. But who can tell how a tale will end out in a sanctum? Let's join them in the kitchen. Mmm. Well, excellent bacon and eggs. I'm sure my friends will like cooking when they come. More coffee? Yes, please. Careful. Oh. I was only reaching for the coffee cup. <laughs> I thought you might have ideas about grabbing this. There's your coffee. Hmm. What time is it? Twenty after two. Uh-huh. Three and a half hours to go before my friends get here. How will they get through the roadblock? Oh, you'll leave it to there. Oh. What's that? That's the telephone. It's in the living room. You better get to it. Oh, you don't let go of that gun. Oh. You shouldn't have tried that. What are you going to do? Answer that telephone first. Get going. Yes. Anybody in the habit of calling you at this hour? No. All right, answer it. But be careful what you say. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Canning. Oh. It's for you. Oh. All right. Lay the receiver down on the table and walk away. All right, that's far enough. Don't try anything. Hello? Linda? Wait, wait, did you get started yet? Oh, where are you? What? Roadblock. Well, you, you've got to get through. I need Doc Stetson. You, you've got to make it, Linda. I can't stay awake forever. All right, all right. Do your best. Call me back later. Oh. What's the matter, Mr. Bishop? Are your friends falling down on you? Shut up. I've got to think. Oh, you don't have anything to worry about, Mr. Bishop. Aren't you a guest of the Cannings in the little white shingled house a mile off Highway 26 north of Accord? Oh, you can be sarcastic, too. Oh, I wouldn't dare be sarcastic to you, Mr. Bishop. Especially when you have that gun. And with my husband unconscious in the car, and you threatening to harm my child, oh, no. No, you still hold all the cards, Mr. Bishop, and you're such a big, strong, brave man. What are you trying to do, get me mad enough to kill you? Aren't you going to kill me anyway? What makes you think that? Because you're a killer by instinct, Mr. Bishop. It's easier for you to kill than to do anything else. I wonder why you didn't murder my husband instead of just knocking him out. Was it because you thought you might need him? Well, you're not afraid of me anymore. No, I'm not. No, I just realized. I can't afford to be afraid. What? I'm a woman fighting for her family, for Harry and Judy. And I've got to use all my wits against you. I can't afford to be afraid. You've got some scheme in that crazy little brain of yours. Yes, Mr. Bishop, I have. I think I've found the chink in your armor. You're a coward. Me? Yes, you. You're the one who's afraid now. Your friends aren't coming. You have a wound in your arm that needs treatment, and you know you can't trust me. You don't dare close your eyes, even for five minutes. And you may have to stay here for several days. How do you like the prospect of staying awake night and day, watching me every minute of the time, afraid that you might drop off to sleep at any minute? Oh, that's how you figure it, huh? Maybe you better kill us all right now, Mr. Bishop. That would be easy, wouldn't it? Just three bullets. Then you wouldn't have to worry about watching anyone. That's an excellent idea, Mrs. Canning. Yes. But then you'd have other worse things to worry about. Such as? This is Saturday morning. The milkman will come to collect for the week's milk. The neighbors will stop by to ask if I want my marketing done. And what will you do? Skulk in the cellar while they ring the doorbell? Yeah. And then there's the police. What about the police? They'll surely search this part of the country. They'll be making inquiries at all the houses. Do you want them to find the car outside? With Harry in it? Oh, <laughs> You figured all the angles, huh? You know, you're pretty smart, Mrs. Canning. I think you're even smarter than Linda. But you forget one thing. Yes? You forget that little girl up there. What do you mean? Come along and I'll show you. Up there. You stay away from Judy. <laughs> oh! Maybe you think you've got everything figured out, but I'm still the boss. <laughs> Gun muscle hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> now, shall we go 
still upstairs. That's better. <laughs> so you think Arnie Bishop is licked, huh? Judy's room. What are you going to do to her? Which is Judy's room? Or are you going to make me open all the doors to find her? It's that one. Uh, all right, let's go in. So you first, Mrs. Canning. I warn you, if you hurt You Judy... first, Mrs. Canning. Please. Please don't wake her. Oh, very pretty child. How peaceful she looks. And innocent. Ain't all childhood the best time of life. It's almost a pity to grow up out of it. You couldn't. You couldn't hurt her. Oh, I assure you, Mrs. Canning, I won't lay a hand on her. Oh, oh no. Not on a beautiful child like that. No. But uh, I've got to protect myself. Let's see. That's the connecting door to your room, isn't it? There's a key in the door. Lock it, please. Now give me the key. Thank you. Now we'll go out the way we came in. I'll take the key out of this door, too. Thanks. You first. Now we'll lock this door on the outside. There you are. Everything's set. You, you just want to make sure she doesn't get out? Yeah, something like that. Huh? Now, will you pull the mattress and sheets off your bed and bring them out here, please? Are you going to sleep in front of her door? Do as I say. All right. I'll help you. I don't understand. Why do you want to sleep out here? Uh, no, I'm... <sighs> Everything just the way I want it. The mattress against Judy's door. But you can't sleep on it that way, half up against the door. I didn't say I was going to sleep on it. Oh, what are you going now, to Mrs. do? Mrs. Canning, we'll see if you can figure out how to beat this angle. What do you mean? What would happen if I were to put a match to this mattress and Betty? Oh, no! This whole floor would be in flames in five minutes. With both doors locked <laughs> Judy wouldn't have much of a chance, would oh, she? Oh, no. <laughs> Still think Arnie Bishop is licked, Mrs. Canning? Oh, no. You're right about one thing, Mrs. Canning. I am in a corner. With this bum arm, I've got no chance of running if the police come. So if they do, and if I'm cornered, I'll set a match to this mattress and fight them off till the whole house is just a bunch of rubble. With Judy in it. <laughs> you uh, understand me thoroughly, Mrs. Canning. Yes. Uh, so it's up to you to see that the police don't come. You're going to lie for me, Mrs. Canning, and you're going to cheat for me, and you're going to kill for me if necessary, because I always have a match ready. <laughs> now, do you still feel like trying any tricks? I'll do whatever you say. More like it. Now, the first thing you're to do, go downstairs and run that car into the garage. Get it out of the way. But don't touch your husband. Don't even look in the back of the car. I'll be watching, understand? Yes. Ah, glad we understand each other at last. Let's go. <laughs> standing right here in the driveway, so don't try any tricks. I won't. Remember, I'm watching. Harry. Harry, dear, can you hear me? Harry? Harry? Oh, he's still unconscious. There's blood on his head. Mrs. Yes, I'm coming. You did take a look at him, didn't you? No, no. All right. No. All right, come inside. Ah, beautiful night, isn't it? It'll be morning soon. What time is it? Almost six. The milkman should be here soon. Oh? 
Well, here's where you start lying for me. After you, madam. Now, I'm going to sit right here in this chair with my hand in my pocket. And in my hand's the gun. Understand? Yes. That's the milkman. You'll tell him I'm your cousin just visiting here for a few days. He'll wonder why you're up so early. Let him wonder. Go on, answer Good morning, Mrs. Canning. I'm the new milkman on the route. Hope I didn't wake you up. Come in, please. Uh, that's two bottles of milk you wanted this morning and a bottle of cream. Yes, yes you can put them on the table. All yeah, right. Oh, this is my cousin. He's visiting us for a few days. Oh, how are you? Hello. You have my bill? Yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. Here. Hey, is that... That's right, Bishop. It's a gun. Sit still and take your hand out of your pocket very carefully. Okay, okay. You win. But how come a milkman with a gun? I, uh... <laughs> I borrowed this coat from the regular milkman. I'm Sergeant Wright, State Police. What? Thank heaven. State Police? Uh, how did you know I was here? Mrs. Canning told us. She? Well, how? I, I didn't let her out of my sight. She broadcasted to us. Broadcast? Yes. Over this set, Mr. Bishop. Yeah. Remember the speech I made you? You didn't know what had come over me. I was really talking to the state police over the short wave. Don't you remember I told you that this was a sending and receiving set that my husband built it? And when I turned off the short wave signals, I turned the switch to sending. And then I hoped, I just hoped my message would get through. Ah. I didn't think you were smart enough. And I thought I had you scared stiff. You uh, look like the kind who would scare easy. Oh, I am, Mr. Bishop, I am. But I warned you, this was a time when I couldn't afford to be scared. Thank you.